7 o'clock. Stand for a moment of silent meditation. Pledge of Allegiance. No, it's broken, Dave. There's a couple missing. There, that's good. That's good. Sylvia, so you're right in it. There's one missing. Just slide <laughs> over. The little guy knows how to do it again. Roll call. <laughs> Bast, Cassette. Here. Mope. Here. Sosar. Here. Monday. Here. Uh, approving the minutes from the previous meeting where they're not ready yet. They'll be ready at the next meeting. Proclamations, communications, none. Courtesy of the floor regarding matters on our agenda today only for now. Nobody? Go ahead, D. D.D. Cass Hazelton, uh, what used vehicles are we getting rid of that we have? Is that the one we got from the sewer authority? Yeah, I was going to say that's the one that the police chief was driving, and I believe it's somebody else has it now. Uh, that was from the sewer authority. Okay. And uh, all right, are we going to replace that car? Uh, yes, we are. It says that. Okay. And where do we, do we have it in the budget to replace it? It's supposed to be done with a grant. But I mean, uh, Chief D'Andrea was here. Isn't that supposed to be done grant. with a grant? It's, grant? it's coming through the state police. Mm -hmm. State police are, are paying yeah. for it. Okay, we have proof of that? Do, uh, I have, just, talk, just talking to the chief, what he said, there was a contract that the automobile, the auto theft, Division of the state police is reimbursing the city up to six hundred dollars per month. Yeah, six six hundred dollars per month, uh, as long as he's on. We have a three a three year contract with that officer and the state police. Okay, now I have a question. What was that officer driving before this? That officer, his vehicle is going to another officer that is working in with the DEA. Okay, and his vehicle is the one that's being sold. Okay, thank you. They're the undercover guys, so I don't. In other words, it's we're replacing the last one, the, uh, the bottom one, okay, with this one from the state police, and then that other officer will get a new one. He's passing it down to the other, uh, and the, the sewer authority's vehicle will be the one that's gone. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Um, question regarding the uh, Norman Tarantino Hazelton. Uh, one of the questions about the, the uh, ordinance that's up for the uh, customer uh, parking area. Is there going to be any towing attached to that? Or is there going to be anybody who's going to be towing enforcement like other cities? Is there something we're going to have to worry about with putting in such a ordinance into the books? Because that's always been a problem. I've been seeing a lot of other cities from major cities, smaller cities, that they use such an ordinance, such regulations to tow a lot of cars uh, from different who are, somebody could be eating at a restaurant next to the restaurant that has a parking spot and park there and have their car towed because they're not in that particular restaurant. I mean, what's going to be the exact enforcement of such a uh, ordinance? Is it towing? Yeah. I, I don't believe the towing, they would be ticketed. And I guess if the tickets would justify the towing, it would come about. But right now, in, in the ordinance, it's a ticket. Ticket. So not gonna, there's no see it escalating to a towing type situation. I don't, I don't believe it on a one issue, it would be a tow on the first offense. 
Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Nobody else? Uh, old business ordinances, ordinance 2014 <coughs> 4, an ordinance approving a modification to the CDBG action plan for fiscal year 2014. Second reading. I present. Second. On the question? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Uh, third reading? I present. Second. On the question? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Next is ordinance 2014-6, an ordinance uh, regulating the issue of customer parking only. This was tabled on 422-14. <coughs> I guess we're gonna let that die that first if one. nobody presents it and then uh, we'll move on. Since nobody presents it, that dies. Moves on to resolutions, none. Ordinances, the new ordinance 2014-7. An ordinance regulating the issuance of customer parking only, patient parking, patient loading and unloading only. Present. Jeff presented it. I'll second. Wait, wait, let me find it. Okay, that's the next one. Yeah, I know, but there's so many pages in between here. Okay, I think I got it. Thank you. Sorry. On the question? I just think that uh, given that this would be given the opportunity for small businesses to have a spot that they could have a customer stop and go in a place without being overtaken by some of the big, bigger businesses. I also think it would be a good way to, if somebody would come in for a sign application, it would be compared to the business license and if they paid their mercantile tax. So I think it's a good checks and balances in that in that aspect. Um, I just would like to try to protect some of the small guys that are, you know, like if you have a place next to you that has 100 customers and nobody could get to yours, I think this gives a good opportunity for somebody to claim a little spot. Uh, if I'm correct, this doesn't affect either park or attendance. No. This is the, so that's clear that anybody who has metered parking that meter parking stays, just so the public knows. Okay. And we have, uh, I'm sorry, Jeff. I, uh, do we have a, a mock-up of, of, of what the, uh, the sign will look like? Does it have the owner's uh, name on it or anything that would pertain it, it would to have, that? It would have customer only or patient only and have the hours that it would be reserved for. Okay. Like okay. a loading that's zone would be nine to five. Right. Patient right. onload would be nine to five. You okay. know, according to the business, and it, when it's not reserved, it would be open for the public. Be open for like the bank signs on Broad Street, was it, are they paying a fee for their spots to Broad and Church Street? Who? The, the banks the bank, on Broad. What bank, there's four bank uh, parking spaces on Broad Street that have signs on them. Are they paying a fee? Right, now. right now, I don't know if they're we'll check. Paying. We'll check into we'll that. Check I, I do think it's a good idea to have a check uh, as an uh, index yeah. on 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 uh, what the other taxes yeah. are. So if signs are allowed on Broad Street, I don't, Broad Street the I don't state think road, I believe. So we may have to have the uh, loading and unloading and stuff done in the uh, on the that side. I to that state that Broad Street is a state road, okay. which are different laws than a city That's road. Jeff, did the, the mayor look at your the new proposal? I did not hear. Your old one, does he like the new he one? He didn't like the, the old one. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure if he didn't like the old one, he's probably not gonna like the new one. This makes it a little, I think okay. it just, just gives more detail to the okay. Okay. older version. And you made changes and the chief made some changes? I got together with the chief and asked him for his input. And he, he came he's up with okay? a couple. The chief's okay with the changes? 
I can't speak for He's the chief. He's raising his hand. Uh, I, yeah. can't I can't speak. speak. I can't ahead, speak you're okay? More. Okay. We're okay with them? Okay. Thumbs up. Okay, that's fine. Okay, any other questions? No. Uh, roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Next uh, resolution, resolution 2000, resolutions, resolution 2014-52, making the city clerk a notary public. I'll Pre present. I'll second. Any question? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday. Yes. Next is resolution 2014-53, awarding the audit for 12 or for 13, 14, and 2015. Go ahead. A motion to table this. Okay, Jeannie made a motion to table. I'll second it. Uh, roll call. Cassatt. Yes. Mope. Yes. Sosar. Yes. Monday. Yes. Next is resolution 2014-54, sale and removal of used vehicle from the Hazleton Police Department's inventory. I present. Second. On the question. This is for Chief, I, I just, one of the questions from the audience came what vehicle this was. I, this, do you want to explain, is it? Anything? Go ahead, you could. Chief, you could come to the podium, I, mean, I just want to make sure my... I apologize, I missed the question. Just for the best of your ability, if you could, could explain, and I know that there are things that you can and that you can't, or, and or may not want to, but in regards to this particular vehicle, uh, first, if we could, just so that the sure. scenario of the vehicles is clear to the general public, sir. This particular vehicle, which is a 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee, originally was purchased and being used by the prior chief of police. When I came in to be the chief of police, I gave that vehicle up and gave it to one of my detached detectives so that he could work on the DEA task force. The vehicle is either nearing or in excess of 100,000 miles. It has reached the point where it is no longer safe to operate with the engine failure, the transmission failures, the exhaust failures, and the leaks. So the vehicle needs to be taken out of service. Um, it, it's my request that we're able to remove this from our rolls, take it off the insurance, and sell it or use it as a down payment for the next resolution. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday. Yes. Next is resolution 2014-55, authorization to approve the municipal financing for an undercover, undercover auto theft task force vehicle. Present. Second. Second. Who did what? <laughs> Jeff uh, made the present that Jeff and I second. presented and Dr. Sosar second. On the question? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Next, resolution 2014-56, the appointment to the Downtown Overlay District Review Committee. Uh, Mary Malone? I present. Second. On the question? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next is resolution 2014-57, appointment to the International Building Code and International Property Maintenance Code Board of Appeals, uh, Building Officials and Code Administration of the National, Charles Ziegler. Present. I'll second. On the question? Is Charles here?
Hello. Just, just put your name and your address, Charlie. All right, uh, Charlie Ziegler, uh, Harrison Street in Hazleton. Is uh, is it all filled up now? This this board, or do they need? Do they still need people? You replacing somebody? Yes, I'm replacing, replacing Mike. 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 Okay, it's all filled up then. As far as I know, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody have any other questions for him? No. No, we're fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next is resolution 2014-58, uh, resolution appointing a designated parking enforcement officer to the city of Hazleton. Uh, no, you have to present it. I'll present it. Let me ask Second it. Okay. Uh, on the question? I, when, on the bottom it says designated parking off, uh, for enforcement officer for the city of Hazleton. Is this basically hiring somebody? Maybe, maybe the chief could come to it. We have some questions on it. I, I know. We're going to, we could maybe stall it. Again, I apologize. We could answer the question uh, on the where, on the on the on the end of the thing here it says the designated parking enforcement officer for the city of Hazleton. Right. Are we hiring this person? Is this one of the people that, from the parking authority that's coming to work for no. the city? No. The um, the the previous appointment by city council to the parking authority for permission to issue parking tickets was a man by the last name of Hoffman. He has either been let go or resigned. I don't know why he left the parking authority. But Mr. Phillips is an, will be an employee of the Hazelton Parking Authority and just needs permission from the city council to be a designated parking enforcement officer for the city, meaning we're authorizing him to write tickets. He is not an employee of the city. He's an employee of the parking authority. Well, regardless of what happens with the redevelopment authority, should we parking authority. The, parking authority. the parking authority should we decide not, or for whatever reason, it shouldn't come on board with the city? All right, this fellow is still with the parking authority. He is not going to become a city employee. He he works for the parking right now, Chief. Right, that's what she's trying to say. Would I? Yeah, I'm not sure if they've hired him or if they're waiting to hire him to find out if council approves him to be a parking enforcement officer. The last I was told by uh, transit, which was uh, Ralph Sharp, was to please have this name put on the ballot so that city council could approve this person to be able to issue tickets for the city. I'm not sure if they've hired him yet or if that's in yeah. the works. Only so we don't end up with him as an employee because if they didn't hire him, then we need to know how he's being paid. He's not being paid by us. I know that. He is not on my rolls, in my budget, in my line item. Um, neither was Mr. Hoffman. Okay. okay. Who, who do we have doing parking tickets, Chief? Who, who's doing parking enforcement? For the Hazelton Parking Authority? Yeah, well, yeah. who's doing that now? Um, it's John. And it was a Mr. Hoffman, and it is whoever works the ticket booth right now. I think there's only three people. There was a Jerry Cora who did parking on weekends. Yeah, didn't we have I believe people? I believe Hoffman replaced Mrs. Cora, and I believe now that Todd Phillips will replace Hoffman. Okay. And then. If, uh, to finish your question, Councilman Mundy, if we're allowed um, with resolution 59, that's Deborah Metz. She is currently a parking authority employee. She does not have the authority from city council to issue tickets. And it's the parking authority's request that since she is always there, should a ticket issuing member of the parking authority be out or if she needs to run and do something with a meter or in the lot and she sees a violation, it seems to make sense that she should be allowed to issue the parking ticket, but currently she doesn't have your permission, so that's why 59 is also on. So if she's approved, that would be the fourth person. 
Okay, so as long as it's on the record. What her job is for the parking authority? I, I'm not sure. She, um, Deborah Metz does their payroll, their administrative tasks, um, okay. but a specific job description I'm not familiar with. As long as it's on the record that we are granting authority to, to write tickets and that we are not hiring no. uh, anybody, that's, that, that's, that, that's okay with me. Yeah. yeah. But that's so read in the record. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Frank. You're thank very you. welcome. Thank you. thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so he's already working there. We're just allowing We're him. We're just giving him authority. Okay. okay, we're okay. Well, actually, he's going to get hired now. He's not actually hired, maybe. But he's supposed to be hired by the parking authority. Right. Okay, yeah, that's... Okay. I understood it correctly. Okay, we're okay. Okay, roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next is resolution 2014-59, resolution appointing a designated parking enforcement officer for the city of Hazleton, Deborah Metz. I'll present. Second. On the question? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next is resolution 2014-60, accepting the 2012 annual audit. Well, at this time, uh, before we, I, we put this on the agenda, I want to say we did have an executive session going over the draft uh, of the audit with uh, our auditors. and. Uh, that's what we had an executive session before the meeting. Okay. Uh, present. Present it. Second. On the question. Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next is the appointment uh, resolution 2014-61. The appointment to the Hazelton City Authority. <coughs> okay, we're gonna, well, we have, to, we have to put a name in. We have to put the name in. We have to present it and amend it to put a name in, right? Well, we're gonna present it with the name in. Yeah. Charlie, we can present it with the name in? Yeah. Okay, fine. go ahead, so, go ahead. Uh, John Nellis, I'd like to uh, nominate for the Hazelton uh, Authority. Uh, I'll second it. On the question? Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Uh, at this time, I don't have the resolution. I have it written out, but I want to make a motion to suspend the rules to <clears throat> do a resolution, it would be, it would I guess be 2014-62, a resolution, well I'm going to, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules first. Okay. I second it. Second it. Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday. Yes. The resolution I'm proposing is authorizing the firm of Skokowski and DeCosmo to file a declaratory and a mandamus action to enforce the 2014 budget uh, for this year. Uh, do I have a second? I have a second. Now this we have to let anyone comment from the audience. So anybody like to comment on it? Go ahead. Yeah, we're, we're we're authorizing the firm of Skokowski and the Cosmo to file action so that we can get our budget enforced, the one that council passed. Go ahead. Go ahead. You could make a Sylvia comment. Thomas Hazelton. I was going to ask whether we got a budget yet. I looked up what a budget was on my computer. It's a legal document that gives the city the authority to incur obligations and pay expenses. It allocates resources among departments controlling how much each department may spend. It tells the people the vision for the future. 
It also conveys actual accomplishments. Reasons to have a budget. Pay bills on time, learn to live within means, distinguish between wants and needs, be a smarter spender, find ways to cut cost, set and prioritize financial goals, step, stop making ends meet by borrowing, and figure out how to get out of debt. This all sounds very, very important, and yet it's the fifth month and we don't have a budget. So please do something about that. We're, we're doing something, thank you. Uh, one more thing, that sign out front of Hayes, uh, City Hall about how old the City Hall is is a disgrace. Why didn't they uh, ask the young people from the high school to make a, a decent sign? That goes to show you how much I didn't see it. I didn't see well, it. Go out there. You won't believe it. Okay. It's been there for a long time. I didn't see it. I'll look at it. Finish. That shows December. how much pride we have in our city. December. Okay, I'll look at it for you, Sylvia. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia. Okay, go ahead. You okay, can make John. Go ahead. John Homa, Hazleton. I am in all for the uh, idea of the, the court case happening. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it, the games have got to stop. Yeah. Joe Yanuzzi has got to learn he does not have the right to play with everybody's lives in this town. Thank you, John. Thank you. Let's get it done and let's stop his disgusting games. Oh, and another thing. After I did talk two weeks ago, uh, the troublemakers in this town that hate me felt that they had the right to start trouble on me. Go ahead and try. You'll lose this time. Thank you. John. Thank you. John. Any other comments just on this uh, resolution that, that, that I have? Go ahead. Thank you, Frank DeAndre, Chief of Police. I'm not sure how this works, but my question is, can this action that we're doing now cause a court to tell us that while this is taking place, we have no budget in place? I don't think that would be the case, but maybe Charlie could answer that. I don't think so. The reason why I ask, I'm concerned only because I know that there's case law when a budget is not in place that the municipal police are not allowed to work and I don't know if it's time for me to contact the state police and tell them that a month or two down the road they might have to cover the city of Hazel. Well, I think that would come under, I think that would be Chris's, that would, that would be Chris's job to do that. To, to, that. to sit with the state police, no, that would I be mine. I think that would be Chris's job to decide if he should contact anyone regarding that. Right. I'm, I'm only bringing it up so that it's not a surprise to anybody when I'm sitting with the state police because that might happen. I really didn't understand how that worked. Well, but I, Frank, you have to remember, back in December when we were running out of money, okay, supposedly by the mayor, the mayor said... The police will work, the fire department will work, right. all right? So we're hoping he still has that frame of mind in case there is a, a, a problem here. I think the issue is the case law that says that if X happens, the municipal police okay. don't work. If I could just do a point of order right now. Uh, after the suggestion that we've just made as far as a, a um, motion, and that we vote on it, um, it probably would be better served for everybody, on council in particular, not to necessarily make much more comment on this except for the lawyer, because what can be said right now sure. can also be used in court, and I would prefer for the protection of everybody here, right. city workers and whatnot, that, that probably we cease this and just vote. 
and I understand your position, uh, Chief, but I think for the sake of everybody, I think we ought to just do what we need to do. I'm not arguing with you, absolutely. My suggestion would be, if you could, Charlie, I, I apologize, Attorney DeCosmo, to please reach out to Attorney Slusser because he was trying to explain the case law to me. I don't really grasp it, and, and that's where my confusion is, and I just want to make sure that everybody was aware of it. Thank you very much for your time, Not counsel. a problem. I, I would didn't call realize Attorney Slusser said anything. Uh, he mentioned it to me this morning because I had asked him. I would call for the vote right now. I, I appreciate it, yeah. Chief, but I would call for the vote. Well, I, I'm just going to leave it at one thing, too. I mean, we're, we're all of the opinion here that, and the way the government works is council, the mayor proposes a budget, Council sets the budget, decides what's spent, decides if the mayor only suggests taxes should be raised. The actual people who raise or lower your tax, uh, we do it. Not him. He could just propose it. It's the same with the budget. He proposes a budget. We ultimately pass it, and we control the amount of money that's spent and whether your taxes go up or down, us, us five. So that's what we're trying to do here. The mayor doesn't understand that. Hopefully, uh, maybe he'll he'll come to some uh, reason, and he'll reason him, he'll come to some reasoning course, and and decide that there, we decide the budget. There is there is an action, and let let's go yeah. to the vote. Uh, I, I, call I for ahead. question. I just have. A is this to actually file it, or to prepare the information needed to file? Charlie, uh, I guess. I mean, that's. Need to file it. We're gonna. Okay, it's, 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 yeah, to, it's to not saying that ready. we're going to file, because I don't want to say I want to file. No, okay, I mean, we're going to get everything ready. Okay. Because I, I, tr I mean, we're I don't. Gonna, okay, that's I okay. Just, I just, I truly don't like the budget that was passed, okay. but I believe that it was passed properly okay. and that it should be in place, but I just this don't want to. This is just to authorize them to, author, to get everything to ready. I'm sure maybe and, we'll have a vote okay, before let's, we. And let's, it's the first let's reading. Let's go to the vote. Yeah. Okay. okay. Roll call. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Okay, that's it for our resolutions. Uh, comments from the audience? Indeed. D. Deacus, Hazelton. I want to bring up a problem that's been occurring in downtown Hazelton. There's been a food truck that comes at night and it stays to the wee hours of the morning. I was up Friday night at 3, and the truck was still there, plus their customers are blasting their music loud while they park to eat. Anyway, there's a couple things. As you said earlier, a state highway has special rules, and I'm not sure he could conduct business on a state highway, because it is in PennDOT's. If, if you can't do certain signs because it's a state highway, how can you conduct a business? Second thing is, uh, how does the person operating the truck use bathroom facilities because all of them are shut down? So that means that he has to leave his truck and maybe go somewhere where it actually falls into. There's nowhere for him to go downtown at that time of the morning. And I think this is not a good thing for downtown. And if nothing else, the noise is very loud. I could hear it through a closed window and come summertime, and it isn't fair to businesses. Did you call the police, D, or I mean, there's a, we have a no, noise ordinance that if the noise is loud, they've been they've been doing a good job of citing people. Well, did you call? Uh, I, I I did tell somebody in the administration about it, and he's still there. And I went and told somebody else today in the administration. But where, where's the truck at? Where is it? It's in front of Security Savings. Frank, after the meeting, uh, please, would you address that? It's because if they're in violation of the noise ordinance, <coughs> something needs to be done about it. If I could, Council, I'd like to be able to speak to it for two minutes yeah. Go right ahead. now. I, I've already said my piece. Last week, when I was made aware of the problem with the noise from the food truck, I immediately dispatched the health department, told them to go check on this I talked to the city solicitor again about the um, food trucks in our ordinance, and I had my 
patrol unit, Sergeant Sientek and Lieutenant Zapofsky go past to verify, in fact, that the noise was wrong, too loud. They were able to verify it. It is definitely too loud. The generator, the owner of the Raffi food truck said he borrowed a generator because his broke. The health department went there, Mark Thompson, and informed him that he is not to use that generator. When I learned that he is again using that generator, and today uh, Dee had mentioned there's no toilets. Diane checked with labor and industry. Our problem stems from our ordinance where we have a definition that says a mobile food truck must move at least once every 10 minutes. The problem is that's all it says. We can't enforce a definition. So we need to put something in the ordinance that says if you don't move every 10 minutes, this is what's going to happen. It's an amendment. Right. But at the same time, I have instructed after learning today that they are in fact back there with the same generator, I instructed every member of my department if they see the truck, although health is going to be sending the NOV telling them to cease and desist, we're going to start citing them immediately every time we see them running that generator for the noise violation until they stop. All right. Chief, uh, one of the things that I would suggest, and maybe you've done it already, but I know that I know that they're uh, up in the, the uh, square, up in Scranton, uh, there, there were ordinances that the city of Scranton made in regards to <laughs> trucks that, that are out during the day and especially service workers from the various uh, 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 the businesses and the offices in the downtown. It may be one of the areas that you want to investigate. Um, I, I know, uh, watching the news on television, that there were some, and, and they came with a, they came up to a very cordial agreement. But I, I don't think anybody was using portable generators either. So sure. they may be of a help and they may not. I've even seen some lawn chairs tossed yeah. out uh, in areas of parking lots that may very well be private property uh, that would be used. So you may. I don't know how far, but between Wilkes-Barre and Scranton, there may be some good help there, too. Absolutely. You have to understand, I love food trucks. As a matter of fact, my wedding anniversary last night, I ate at a food truck in Wilkes-Barre, what the fork. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, they're phenomenal great. food. At great, the great. same time, I believe that we don't have an ordinance that governs them, and so the good businesses suffer. They don't pay the same... Uh, taxes, they don't pay the same sign fees, they don't pay the same business licenses, and they have the ability at sometimes to, you know, use the power of the city, put out chairs. So I think that we're going to have to look at... They may be a help. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. I could have to stay two, two seconds, if that's okay. Okay, later, John. Later, right. once we... Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Go ahead. Oh, okay, after, after, after Charlie. Charlie Ziegler, Harrison Street in Hazleton. I still have a large problem of a large amount of abandoned vehicles in the city. Now I have a suggestion. I know when the city has these vehicles towed, it costs them money. The only one making out on these vehicles are the towers. My suggestion to the city is to put up a citywide towing contract that towing companies have to bid on it and purchase from the city of Hazleton for all the towing. This way there's more revenue coming into the city and the vehicles are off the roads. There's still, the city did tow a lot of cars. As fast as they're being towed, they're being replaced by others. The city's not making no money on this. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Charlie. Thank, Thank you. you. Go ahead, Richard. Uh, good evening. My name is Richard Wenches. I live in Hazel Township, 119 Forest Hills. And uh, the reason a township resident has come here to the city is because uh, there's a municipal problem with the three municipalities, and I'm starting to see it grow. It's got to do with these TVs and the pieces of equipment that are not permitted to be 
disposed of as we're used to in the past with the regular garbage. Um, I do a lot of walking, and there was an article in the paper by the standard speaker on the 17th stating that the city was going to have a greater Hazleton cleanup for televisions, along with a $20 fee. And it doesn't clearly say, like, it should say, well, what size TV. It just said $20 fee for a large TV. And right after this article went in the paper, where I walk is on East Diamond Avenue out to, out to Hazelbrook, out, out that way. Uh -huh. Beautiful walking area. It was like the dandelions on my lawn, they started showing up. I mean, there was eight TVs in one week after this article. The people don't read the paper, evidently. They don't realize that there would have been a place to take them. They dumped them. And they're still being dumped out there if you go along Stockton Mountain Road and so forth. Now, the thing is this. I don't think a lot of these TVs are coming from the township. I think they're coming from the city. And the reason I say that is if you people drive around the city like I do to get through it, you'll see them on East Diamond Avenue, you'll see them on 15th Street. Right now there's one on 16th Street on Church, 16th and Church, sitting right there in the curb. It's not going anywhere. I firmly believe, and what I'm talking to you about is the same thing I'm going to talk to my municipality next week. There needs to be a plan where a dumpster or something put at the garages of each municipality where at the convenience of the, and during the hours of operation that these pieces of equipment can be deposited. Because right now, they're going out in my township. They might be going to some areas of your township, which they are. I could see them. But most of the stuff I see is coming into my township, and it really upsets me. So I'm, I'm hoping that this body would actually look at this issue. This $20 thing, you can take and throw it out the window. Majority of the people in this township, 20, or this city, $20 is a lot of money. They're going to put it in their car, and they're going to take it to my township and dump it at night. That's what they're going to do. They don't want to spend $20. They don't want to spend a dollar. They just want to get rid of it right after they buy their new LCD TV. They're not going to wait till October, which is, I suspect, the plan for the next one is going to be six months from now. They're not going to wait. They're going to dump it this weekend when the weather breaks. And then my township picks it up. So that's why if I start with you people, move on to my township, and everybody say, you know what, yeah, we've got a plan for this. The city, the, the state dumped, on, dumped it on us, really. By law, they said, you can't put it in the, uh, you know, the garbage anymore. And everybody's now backpedaling, like, well, well we got to do something. Mm -hmm. The other issue I have is the tire issue. Hazel Township, along the spring, is developing more tires than Jack Williams is now having. That's, it's how bad it's getting. And it's not really funny because it's, it, it develops the mosquitoes, right. the fires. It makes it a, a lousy welcoming card to come visit our city. And what's happening is, and I'm glad the chief is here because maybe you could tell us, there are several businesses in this city that I suspect they're working out in the, in the alleys, aren't disposing them properly, or are they being confirmed they're disposing them, or are they licensed? You tell me. Are these people licensed? There's one on 15th Street, there's one on Diamond Avenue, and I don't like to pick them out. I don't like to say names, but are these businesses properly licensed? Are they verified they're their byproduct is being disposed of, because somebody in the commercial business is doing it. There's just far too many of them going into my municipality. That's my second question. So did Andy ask me, are they being inspected? Do you know, Chief? Yeah, they are inspected, they are licensed. Are they properly disposed of, do you know? I can't answer the disposal question. Well, anyway, all I can do is look, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. I'm coming to you to ask you, Please consider this thing about the TVs. Yeah. And if you would, this tire issue, because it's getting way out of hand in my municipality. And then I'm paying for it. Right. 
That's what's happening. I know the county has a program, Rich, where they take everything. Yeah, they, well, th those tires yeah. that are out there on, by the Stockton and or by the East Diamond area have been there for over a year, and now they're growing. I mean, they're becoming, well, the people are starting to see them as a place to deposit them. Hazel Township, yeah. right. Yes, it's that just may be on something the that uh, we can maybe coordinate with uh, Hazel Township. I know that there are a lot of people who have, uh, uh, for example, public service that they have to perform or something like that. Um, you know, I'm going to again bow to the chief and I'm going to bow to the others that are part of law enforcement. If somebody receives uh, public service time that they have to put in, Besides painting in that, this this very well could be one of the things. Maybe that could be a, of, a, that of assistance. That is perfect. So, exactly. you know, it, but it's something that we would have to investigate. You know, it, it's easy to throw out as an idea. Sometimes it's harder, literally, to get a confirmation. Say, yeah, you can do that. But you need the conversation. But we'll we'll to start. get the conversation going. And you need to develop right. something because it's there now. Finally, when it comes, to one more thing, and I'm done because I this is a really great experience for me. When it comes to the noise ordinance, I can imagine what it's like in the city because just the other day I saw something I never saw in my life. I saw a kid on a bicycle with two huge speakers blasting music as he's pedaling down Diamond West. I have never seen it with a little battery on the back to keep this thing powered up. I said, this is incredible how this is going. I, what an idea. Thank you very much. Thank I you, enjoy Rich. talking Good to you all. Thank you, Thank you Rich. Thank, Thank you, you, Rich. Chief, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, do we have signs uh, that are available that you know of? And I'm not sure if the township, you know, dumping is prohibited, you know, and they used to have them about littering and stuff and with a fine listed. Um, let me just tell you about the dumping prohibited. On, on Hazelbrook Road, where a lot of the burning has been going, the township put a sign, dumping prohibited. You know what the first thing did? He took the piece of furniture <laughs> I, I just said, you know, as a suggestion, only be, I know it, it, let's put it this way. A well, lot I of think the, people know that you're not supposed a to A lot of the stuff. people, you know, get scared when they see the dollar amount, if, if, if it's hefty enough on the sign, you know. Uh, I think camera systems, like these cameras they have out there today that take pictures and things in rooms might be a uh, help. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that my municipality gets into that. And it's the same area. They did have a dumpster at, at city at uh, at the garage, and people were throwing stuff they weren't supposed to throw in. But I suggest to them, why not have a camera monitor that, so you know if somebody's going to put something that shouldn't be in that dumpster. I I agree with you. That is a we should have that, or someone could take it. And the thing about the electronics. The electronics, I guess they benefit somehow too by taking electronics that they could recycle or take the silver out. What we should do is make them take the TVs and take them for nothing. That's, that's, that's what I would suggest maybe to, to Brenner. If they're making money on the, the other electronic stuff, they should absorb that by being able to take TVs that people should bring up. So we'll suggest that to the, to the mayor. Yeah. Any other? Go ahead. Thank you. Well, this, I have to sit because I. You can sit down. That's fine. Diana Jeffers from uh, Dame Street talking about this. The other morning, I got a waste, and on my lawn was two LED TVs and a computer. And I live at 545 North James, one of the worst streets. I guess some clown didn't know what to do with his TVs and his computers, and I have a big single home. We were right on the grass. So my daughter came up the next day, which well, was coming anyway, and she took him back to the state of Maryland to dispose of them. Yeah. But to get awake in the morning, you have two TVs on your lawn and a computer. Well, we're we're going to do something about that. We're going to yes, we're going to figure something out. Something. Yeah. I, something I think else. having a dumpster, having them more often. Go ahead, Chief. We want to say something. I, I I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm not, I'm not sure what the solution is because. It's the 
the city authority that has the garbage contract. I'm not sure what we can tell somebody else's contract, but I think that, as Mr. Wench has said, if I have to wait until October to get rid of a TV. You're gonna throw it out. I, right, no, I wouldn't throw it on your lawn, but <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I, I, I need somewhere, some way to dispose of it. Um, yeah, this is a problem. We, we need a, a site that people could take all the time, like a dumpster, but it should be monitored. Right. To make sure that people take, put what should be done in there. Some place where there is a camera, yeah. maybe. If City Hall has cameras, right. put a dumpster but I, on but I, our I, I agree, at this point, I myself, we discussed it, oddly enough, this morning at the staff meeting, there are so many department heads that constantly get calls about uh, yet another TV. I mean, I know that there's one on Buttonwood and Laurel Street that we went to go pick up today. They're just, they're all over the city. So I, I agree that we need to figure out we need to figure what out can we do with them. Yeah. We will do that. Wait, you could go after Mark. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Mark, he's gonna go first, go ahead. Go You're gonna be. Uh, to Charlie's and uh, this gentleman's point about uh, the abandoned vehicles with Charlie and uh, the garbage, um, on May 18th, there's going to be a provision, which you guys know, the new reenacted third class city code, uh, 27A, which is nuisance abatement. Now, the council will, be charged, will have the authority to charge a department to uh, deal with these nuisances and have a nuisance officer uh, cite uh, whatever the nuisance is and also uh, prescribe as far as how to dispose of it. And if they don't, they'll be fined. And if they don't, if they don't pay the fine, then they could, you know, there's other recourses for that. So I suggest that the council look into implementing that and I will have a uh, as far as a, a plan to deal with uh, nuisances as, and also the uh, blighted properties in terms of uh, the, the authorities and boards and committees that deal with it uh, by the, before the next meeting so you guys can review it. Uh, also, I was, like I said, I wasn't here for the uh, beginning of this meeting, so um, I did not hear as far as what the, uh, what the council uh, decided as far as what to do between its uh, contention between the executive branch, the administration. Um, my suggestion, okay, would be as far as govern, government, whether local, county, or state, is prescribed in the Constitution. And you can't have the executive branch infringe on the legislative branch, nor can you have the legislative branch infringe on the executive branch. So when, some, when one person usurps the other branch, correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Sosar, because you're, you're the doctor of political science, but doesn't that undermine the Constitution as far as the authority prescribed in it? I mean, we, we don't have an autocracy. We have a representative democracy here. And that's what we need to emphasize, not only with local government, but with county and with state. Because you can't just throw out uh, the Constitution. You can't throw this out. This stays, regardless of how you feel, regardless of how anybody feels, this Constitution guides us, okay? And if you pass something that goes against this, or if you don't care if anything that the action that, uh, whether it's the administration or whether it's council or whether it's the judiciary, if you don't care, then you shouldn't be in office. That's how I feel, I'm sorry, but that's the, that's the way the con uh, you know, Constitution prescribes this to all, all levels of government. And I've been through, <laughs> the state meeting today, the county, and now city. So if it's one thing I learned today, it's that all elected officials have to abide by 
what is prescribed in this. It's not about egos. It's not about turf. It's about this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'm very happy that I, I, I am finally getting up and saying how I feel due to the fact that I've had a lifetime of being way too terrified to say how I feel about anything my whole life. I, uh, I just want to, uh, Im to be sure that I use my inalienable rights to say what I think and give support where, where, wherever needed. Thank you, John. Uh, it, it's looking like uh, some want me to shut up so they could have their way. They'd have to have me killed so, so I would shut up for them. That's the only way I'll shut up ever. I'm not going to shut up anymore. Thank you, Jeff. And I will help get somebody real in the people's office of the mayor I know. when it's time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Go ahead, Amanda. Norman Tarantino, Lee Cord, Hazel. I want also one thing I want to do is nice to evidently, evidently, evidently uh, commend the city when things are running right properly. And I want to commend the city on the cleaning up of the streets because last week they uh, swept uh, Holly Magnolia Street in that area where I live at, and I raked up a lot of the debris and stuff that was in the court out onto Magnolia Street. It was picked up with no problem, and they did a very nice job. And also, I want to commend the police who are coming by and following and ticketing the people who did not, after having the announcement, move their cars. And I saw three people on Fern Street get ticketed uh, on last Tuesday morning when they did that. And it's about time that people may would wake up and just move their car for 15 minutes, and they would do a better job for the city. So I want to commend the, what the city's been doing with cleaning up the town. And I was told not to uh, put the stuff in a pile, just rake it out in the street, and we picked up, and it was picked up with no problem. All the uh, leaves and stuff that were left in the alley, I raked up to the, to the street, and they were picked up with no problem. So I hope the other people who live in the courts or some of the smaller seats would have done that, at least on the days before the streets are swept, pull the stuff out of the courts, at least try to help the city like I do uh, once or twice a year to try to keep um, my street cleaner. So I'd like to see more people doing that. And also, once you're on the subject of televisions, there was a TV left on Lee Court and Magnolia Street uh, yesterday It wasn't picked up with the trash. So we have another TV on Magnolia Street that was there when I left uh, this afternoon to come to uh, the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Norman. Getting to be a full-time job picking up the TVs. Any other questions from the audience? Thank you. Questions from mayor's not here. Junior council? Junior council? Uh, well, obviously, um, the guy that came up here and said, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. He talked about how the Constitution was important. He was Mark. Mark. Yeah. said is really important because the Constitution is what our founding fathers based this country on and to throw that out just destroys at this point. So that was a very good comment and I think that this right here that you guys are trying to finally fight back against the mayor is semi-important but you know I just don't want this to greatly affect this city because we, I don't think we need any more <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, you want to say something? Well, yeah, I'm, I was first, I want to say that um, I have been working with the chief on the garbage situation. The food truck thing has come up, and also the towing and the impound. Um, I wanted to thank the street light guys for coming to give uh, the presentations because the, sh the brighter streets can be a very positive impact on the city. And if it's done for free and we get a few hundred thousand left over, even better. I want to thank the chief and Rick and the street guys for coming. That's about it. Okay. Jeannie? Okay, I've got a few things. Number one, I agree with him. We had, some of the people weren't here this evening earlier. We had some really nice presentations on street lighting, okay? And we're changing over to LED lights. Uh, it's supposed to save the city money. Uh, in the long run, it will be a 10-year program probably that it will take to get 
uh, the savings and everything done that uh, we're free of debt and everything else, but it's supposed to be to brighten up the city, and that's one of the specific things I asked. I also address the question of whether it's going to shine straight down or it will spread out. They assured us it, it, with the systems, either one, that we will have the spreading out of the light because LED has a tendency just to shine down. This is, I'm only saying this because some of the people weren't here and I know you are interested. So I'm just reiterating this for you people tonight. Uh, another thing I wanted to address, first of all, thank you all for coming. I always thank you and I appreciate all the work you did. Streets are gorgeous, guys. Thanks. Thumbs up. All the dirt piles were gone. I loved it. Um, but I had an email come to me. And a lot of work was done in the city on some of our playgrounds. And some future work is going to be done on, like, West Court Playground and whatnot. And that's a lot of investment money that's put in, grant money, whatever, donation money. And I hate to see it go to waste. Jeff did a wonderful job on the James Street Playground, <coughs> with the revitalization of that. And um, it disturbs me because there's always a problem, it seems, on the James Street Playground. Now, this was my email. I'm not mentioning his name because I don't want any reper repercussions to fall on him. But it was, hi, Jeannie. Yesterday, Sunday, April 27th, there was a cleanup on the playground uh, by a young couple with many volunteer children. And they came and did a fantastic clean cleanup of all the garbage, plastic bottles, etc. They were there for over two hours. It was much appreciated. Today, just after 18 hours since the cleanup, I personally removed about a dozen plastic drinking containers, empty paper bags of chips, a glass jar that was not there at 2 p.m. yesterday. There were older guys playing basketball there until about 8.15 p.m. last night. Noisy, too. Why don't the police patrol this area and give tickets or even arrest littering individuals? They have a camera there, not sure that it works. Um, it's a shame that so many hours go into cleaning here, and in less than a day, it's a mess. Take the basketball court away like Williamsport did, and about 80% of the problems will go away. I wish the mayor lived here for a summer, and he would think differently, or maybe not. As always, his name, trying to keep a nice neighborhood. It's clean again now at 7.30. Uh, A.M. Monday. Let's see what happens. Thank God for rain this week. Keeps the ball players away. Hi, Jeannie. Looks like the B, uh, basketball players are still in violation. Playground was clean Thursday. A.M. This morning, Friday, you see plastic bottles darting, uh, starting to accumulate. And note the 40-ounce bottle of liquor in the paper bag, uh, empty on the baseball basketball court. Wow, isn't this great? And he emailed me pictures. Okay. So we have booze containers and water bottles and whatnot. My suggestion, and I, I want to work with it with the chief, my, and I, I don't, I'm not sure if it will work or not, but this is my suggestion. Um, and I talked to Dave and Jack, and I, I said that to the, uh, this individual. As I was, said, I would like to read your letter without using your name and show your pictures. Uh, I want to initiate a new policy of resolution. I call it, you abuse it, you lose it. Take the hoops down if they disrespect the playground. The hoops do not go back up until they keep it clean, obey the curfew, and keep the noise down, and then they'll get them back. Only if they follow this. If they do it again, they come back down and stay down until they stop. Uh, I want to see fences. Now, we're putting all this money into playgrounds. I spent a lot of time in New York the last couple of months. For a city that's that size, those playgrounds and their facilities for uh, soccer, you name it, they're beautiful. The people appreciate the green spaces that they have because they don't have that many of them. Even the pier that my granddaughter did a shoot on, Pier 35, every inch of the grass that was available was utilized. Walkers, bikers, people sunbathing, whatever. They keep, for a city that size, those parks are beautiful, but they're also fenced. I know fencing is an expense, but Jeff did most of the work at James Street Playground. 
I think the only thing missing there is a gate, and perhaps we can find funding through one way or another through recreation because they have money in their uh, account uh, to put a fence, not a fence, uh, a gate up and lock it. At least maybe we can address that problem and start working towards that with the other playgrounds. They need to learn to respect them. We have certain hours that we use these playgrounds. They're not supposed to be there using them in the evening time. I don't want to see gang graffiti and king signs on the little pavilions that are there. I saw it at Lawn Playground when I was up with my granddaughter a couple of weeks ago. Um, we need to say that these are for our children. They're for the adults as well if they're respected. And I think that if they abuse it, the hoops should come down and they don't go back up until we see that they're keeping the playground clean. I don't know if you people agree with me, but I'd like to see something done on that order. Yes. I'm not sure if that's part of the. Well, I don't know. They have. They. You've seen them do it before, Ms. Garrow. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. Well, we'll we're going to talk to maybe the somebody from the water department and see why they're not doing that or. But they've done it before. I like think I said, I don't want to see beer bottles and liquor bottles or whatever on our playgrounds. If they, they don't belong there, they don't belong influencing the kids. Lisa, God knows maybe, what else. Uh, maybe we'll send a, a letter to the uh, to the water department about. I, 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 I think I, I think that's part of the solution. Hmm? Go ahead, I, Chief. I actually believe part of the solution is, and I get the same emails as as you. The barrels are constantly full. I don't believe Mascaro currently does do it. Sometimes they did, but I know that it usually falls on the highway, which is what I wanted to verify. Yeah. The problem is that the highway is so shorthanded doing everything else that it would make more sense for us to put two extra barrels at each playground, keep them close to the fence so that when the garbage truck comes past, they move them or they dump them, and we see what it would cost to put what do we have, seven, eight playgrounds? Uh, one extra, you know, dump two barrels there. I, I'm not sure what it would take. It's the city's garbage. Well, who puts the one barrel there? Well, who dumps them? I mean, the, the city puts the, bar, the, city yeah, puts so the barrels out. Two or three. Right. But it's the city's garbage, therefore, you're not going to have to recycle it because the city is exempt from recycling. So nobody's going to have to say garbage bag, uh, plastic glass, but I think part of the solution to keeping the playgrounds clean is at least once a week have the, the garbage, if it's able to be done, have the garbage contractor dump the basket. I, I, I think it would be a big help. When, when we did the James Street, I believe that Mascaro took the stance where they only pick up garbage on the streets. They wouldn't come into the playground to empty it. So I had asked a, a neighbor to go over and take the bags out if there was bags, and there was never bags to put. Well, I mean, if, the, if they're putting it in the barrel, you're right, extra Mas barrels would make sense. But and Mascaro won't go on the property. And that would, you know, maybe send the memo to Frankie saying put extra barrels at the playgrounds so that at least that's where the garbage is, so it's not all over the place, at least they're in the barrels. But, but and we'll figure out how to empty them or what to do. It, it's not just the garbage, it's the noise, okay? They're violating the curfew, I would imagine. They're adults. They're sitting there abusing the playgrounds. And uh, it's not fair to the neighbors. I mean, they live, and during the day, they, they listen to the children play and whatnot, and that's fine, and if the children are respectful. But 
come evening time, they they should be allowed to enjoy their porch and be able to sit out without having to, to suffer the repercussions. Uh, they don't have it in New York. New York, they're locked up, and they are kept really nice because I take my granddaughter to them. And if they can do it in a big city like that, I don't understand why we can't do it here. Okay, thank you for coming. Can I just say one more thing about the go ahead, playgrounds? Go ahead, um, go ahead, Dave. I mean, I know you keep saying that I did the work on the playground. I raised the money with help, but the yes. street guys did a great yeah, job. Yeah, it was our department. They, that did. they planted the 60 some trees, and they, they were the ones that fixed the pavilion and put the sign up. So I don't want to. Yeah, no, I that, did, I that, did, that was a mistake on no, my No, I just part. don't want yes. I mean, they, they did a, a wonderful job down at James Street and Arthur Street and the Pine Street. I don't want to take all the credit. I, no, I, oh. I don't, I don't Our want. Our guys did do a great job. <laughs> they, they did a, the hard part. They mulched, too. Yes, they did. Okay. 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 Is that it? No, that's it. Go ahead, Dave. Mm. One of the things that, uh, and it's it, it, nothing is a perfect answer to it. I would, I remember back many years ago when, uh, uh, the playground associations took care of each playground. And uh, I would encourage uh, the city itself, and if we can do anything as city council to try to resurrect, uh, for a few dollars investment to neighbors who live by these uh, uh, playgrounds, uh, who have kids who utilize the playgrounds on a daily basis and summer's coming, um, and, and we're gonna have kids out of school in, in just a few weeks. Um, uh, this becomes more and more important. The more recreation that we have for the kids, the less that they are, are, are gonna get in trouble. Uh, and we need to have them clean and we need to have them useful for our kids. Uh, but that means that there are gonna to have to be some adults who are gonna be willing to take charge as parts of the neighborhood uh, uh, playground associations. So I, I just wanted to mention that as number one. Um, number two, and uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'm gonna take a little thunder at this point, but I, I, when we did pass a, uh, a re resolution tonight, and I'm just gonna pass it on to Charlie. Charlie, that, and, and Lisa, we did pass a, an ordinance or a resolution tonight naming John Nillis to the Hazleton City Authority uh, as an, uh, a member, and that would be to fulfill uh, if I'm not mistaken, right, the the uh, the Bob yeah, the balance of his term, term the balance of the term itself. So, uh, and we wish Bob well yet, but uh, this would be to to fill that term, right? Okay, and that's how the resolution should read. Um, I've probably said so much uh, in in a lot of other meetings along the way. I had to steal a chair tonight because I don't want to get into that again. But somebody did break my <coughs> chair. Uh, so I stole one from over there. Uh, it's not getting used, so I thought I would use one of those. Um, <laughs> uh, everybody, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your ideas. Um, it goes to show that within two hours, we can still accomplish a lot, regardless of what people will say about us or do uh, and comment on. We can accomplish an awful lot if we just set our minds to it and we work together and that's what we have to do. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. I just have a couple quick things. Uh, I know uh, I had some, somebody called me about uh, on Church and Vine, 235 First Street. Somebody was remodeling a house and there's, there's stuff that's in the yard or against the house. Maybe you could have somebody look at it, Mike. 235 First Street. And also somebody called me about 588 West Green Street. Somebody put a fence and they put it partly on the sidewalk. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe they, they're taking the cities right away. The only other thing I have is URS. I know everybody read in the paper about the closing of URS and I'm appalled that, that they could let, that, that, that anybody could let that close. I know the uh, Pennsylvania budget was cut for two years, 35% each year. You know, whether that contributed to the closing of URS, I don't know, and I know they've had their problems with funding, but Maybe we should, you know, Dave, you could draft a letter and we'll all sign it, a letter to the sure. governor, I'll be you happy. know, saying that we're totally against this and if there's anything they could do to, to restore the funding or, or try to reopen it. Okay. Uh, happy to. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead.
Well, whoever works with them, I mean, we're totally against the closing of URS. It would hurt, it's gonna hurt uh, the area. It's gonna hurt people that, that wanna work, people that wanna do something with their lives. And also the people that, the families who, who also work, it's gonna affect them because now they could no longer take their people, you know, somewhere to, to work and, and where are they gonna go? So uh, maybe Dave, you could draft a letter yeah. that on behalf of council, we all sign it and you could send it uh, to the governor. I'll have it written and I'll pass it around to all yeah, council members that, that so would, that you can review it and yeah. then we'll sign it. Maybe some of the members of uh, the, at the meeting if they want to. Well, any, anybody, but uh, it's terrible that there's closing and we're, we're you know, we, we I, know, I don't know what we could do, but uh, we could try to do something. Our best. At that, I'll make a motion to um, adjourn the meeting.